Hola clase! Today we're going to talk about the preterite tense part two video. This is the second video um, of the preterite tense and today we're going to just focus on the irregular verbs. So let's do a quick recap. On the last video we talked about the preterite tense is the past tense. Um, in this video we're going to cover the ones, those funky verbs, the ones that are just have spell changes or do something irregular, break all the rules from the last video. So go ahead and get your paper ready, your pencil, let's take some notes. So let's look at this. All right, first of all, we're gonna start off with what is this video all about? Learning goals and scales. So you are level one if you can recognize what an irregular verb is from a regular verb. So when you see the verb in the unconjugated form, do you already know in your head, oh, that's an irregular verb? That's a level one. Level two, can you conjugate it in the preterite tense? And level three, can you put it into a sentence in the past? So we are shooting to do a level three, that's our goal, um, in, in order to be able to put it in a sentence is what we're looking for because that's what you're going to have to do when you talk to me for your DBA as well as for your assignments. Um, a level four is just being able to do that with other topics alongside of regular verbs. So can you put an irregular preterite tense along with a regular preterite tense within the same um, within the same context as well. So that's a little bit of level four but right now we're going to shoot for a level three. All right so let's get started. So, irregular verbs. Here we go. Note, none of the irregular verbs carry an accent mark. So that is what makes them irregular for the most part. They don't have an accent mark. Um, whereas, if you recall from our last um, video for the preterite tense, you had accents on the first person, the yo form, as well as the third person, the el, a, a, usted form. But check these guys out. No accents. So you have e, iste, o, imos, istais, ieron. I noticed that it's ieron, so even if it's an AR verb and the irregular, it always has that ending. So these are the endings for all of our irregular verbs today. So let's look at the verb tener. Tener in the past tense would be had. It actually goes to tuve. So tuve, tuviste, tuvo, tuvimos, tuvisteis, tuvieron. So I had, you had, he or she had, we had, they had. Um, so that's tener. You can pause the video if I go a little too fast and copy these down. The next one that we have is estar. You have estar power up. That's my uh, my cell phone. So um, estar would be for locations or for feelings or for this case just location. Like I was at the beach yesterday. I'd say estuve en la playa. So you have estuve, estuviste, estuvo, estuvimos, estuvieron. Notice no accents. Um, use estar for locations. Next up, we have the word andar. Andar means to walk, or I walked around my neighborhood, um, or I walked on the beach, anduve en la playa. Um, so you have anduve, anduviste, anduvo, anduvimos, anduvieron. So for these, um, you just can jot these down as well for andar. Next up, poner. This one you'll see often because you'll see, um, like you got dressed, I put on clothes. Um, that would be using the word poner, or I put something on um, in my backpack, that kind of thing. It could be to put, to place, or to set. Um, and these have no accents as well. And your pronunciation would be puse, pusisto, um, sorry, puse, pusiste, puso, pusimos, pusisteis, pusieron. Um, so if you want to say, I put on a shirt this morning or yesterday or something in the past, you could say, me puse, me puse la camisa ayer. So put on the shirt yesterday. Poder, not to be confused with the previous one of poner. So poder would be could. You have pude, pudiste, pudo, pudimos, pudieron. Those often get confused, but um, they're not. They're different verbs. One means to put, one means could. So they're different. And then saber. Saber in the past tense changed meanings a little bit. Um, instead of it means to know um, in the present tense, you would say I knew something. It actually changes meaning to I found, I found out in the past tense. I found out. So, um, supe, supiste, supo, supimos, supieron is how you say that. So, supe la, la verdad ayer. Like I found out the truth yesterday. Um, to find out, you would say supe. All right, let's do some practica. So, number your paper one to six. 
Go ahead and pause the video. I want to see if you can go through, read this sentence, and see if you can conjugate the verb in parentheses correctly in the past tense. These are all irregulars. So go ahead and pause your video and see how you do. All right, one through six, here we go. For number one, you should have had anduvo because your subject is Rafael. Number two, you should have estuvimos because it's nosotros. Number three, you should have tuvieron because your subject is los amigos. Number four, the yo form of saber is supe. So supe, I found out, supe. La viajera, number five, you should have puso. And number six, nosotros tuvimos que ir al correo. We had to go to the post office. So tuvimos. How'd you do? Hopefully good. All right, let's see some more. You have hacer in the past tense. It was I did or I made. You have hice, hiciste, hizo, hicimos, hicisteis, hicieron. Notice for hizo, there's a spell change here. You see that Z on there? So hizo with a Z. Make sure you write that down because it'll count it wrong. All right, your next one is querer. It goes to quise, quisiste, quiso, quisimos, quisieron. Means wanted, wanted in the past tense. Next, you have dar and ver. We talked about these two in the last video, but I'll go over them again. They look exactly the same. You have di, diste, dio, dimos, disais, dieron. Gave or saw. All right, let's do some practica. All right, let's see how many do we have of these. We have, ah, <laughs> we have five. So number your favorite one to five, pause the video, and then let's go over it. I went ahead and gave you a freebie, number one. So number one, we said, Rafael quiso ir al cyber cafe. He wanted to go to the internet cafe or the, the cyber cafe. So pause your video one to five and see how you do. Can you conjugate the verb in the parentheses um, correctly in the preterite tense? All right, here we go. Number two, you have yo and then dad. So you should have D because you're talking about I gave. I gave Rafael money in order to use the computer. And a lot of um, other countries, when you go to, you have these internet cafes, um, a lot of people don't necessarily have a computer at home. So you have to go to the cafe and you have to pay money per hour that you're going to be using the internet. So that's where that sentence comes from. Number three, you have Anita y Juana quisieron. Number four, the first blank you were to put there, you should have vieron. And then in the next blank, you should have dieron. So they saw a lot of pretty clothes and gave them to the um, gave the money to the to the cashier. And the last one, you should have iso. So the girl made plans to go to the club in order to dance. All right, awesome. Next up, these I have a spell change. They don't look anything like the infinitive. So you have traer, which means brought. The past tense would be traje, trajiste, trajo, trajimos, trajeron. Notice that I put a star here because it doesn't have an I in there. So it's just trajeron. And this J, where did this J come from? Who knows? That's what makes these irregular preterites. <laughs> Then you have decir. This one you see a lot. You talk about, oh, so-and-so told me this, or they told me that, um, or you said this. So it goes to dije, dijiste, dijo, dijimos, dijeron. Notice that the I is gone here as well. Um, so that there's a random J in there. The E goes to an I. It's all kind of weird. These are the ones that you're going to have to study. Their spell changes. That's what this whole video is about, E regular preterites. All right, let's do some practica. Number your paper one to six. See what you can do and see if you can conjugate the word in for parentheses in the preterite tense. So it's the last ones that we just finished talking about, the ones that are funky as well, have a random spell change. See how you do. All right, welcome back. So number one, you guys should have dijeron. Actually, I misspelled that. This I is wrong. <laughs> no I in there. Number two, you should have trajo. Number three, you should have traje. Number four, dijimos. Number five, dije. And number six, trajiste. How'd you do? Did you get that first one right? I know I missed it. <laughs> 
So guys, um, I have a song to help you memorize these irregulars. I can't take credit for it. For it actually it comes from Senor Jordan's YouTube channel, which is a great YouTube channel if you ever need help with anything. Um, so the song link is here, um, but I want you to be able to um, listen to the song. There were only a way to remember at least the yo forms of these common irregular verbs in the preterite. Hmm, I feel like we could remember the rest of the forms more easily if we knew at least the yo form. Wait, si se puede. There is a way. I can't take credit for this, but I have always found it helpful since I learned this little song in high school. That will be helpful for you too when you're trying to remember how the irregular verbs are in the preterite. It's the tune of La Cucaracha. Here goes. Tener estuve, estar estuve, y desfui también sé. Poner es puse, poder es pude, traje es para traer. Hace quise, a ver pude, sabe super querer quise, y decir vine, venir vine. Me olvidar de no acentos. Tener estuve, estar estuve, y desfui también ser. Poner es puse, poner es pude, traje es para traer. Hacer hice, a ver hube, sabe super querer quise y decir dije, venir vine. Me olvidar de no acentos. Una vez más. Tener estuve, estar estuve, y les fui también ser. Poner es puse, poder es pude, traje es para traer. Hacer hice, a ver hube, sabe super querer quise decir dije, venir vine, me olvidar de no acentos. Okay, Classe, how was that song? <laughs> I hope you liked it. I know it can be a little bit corny, but it's something that sticks in your head and that you're able to use it later on um, to try to even identify whether it's an irregular verb or not. So let's look back at our learning goals and scales. Level one, can you recognize an irregular verb from a regular verb? All right, so can you even recognize an irregular verb? So I actually wanna give you a quick little test. Let's see if you guys can. So on your paper, I want you number one through six. So this is actually pulling verbs from Preterite Video 1 and Preterite Video 2. Which ones are irregular? Which ones break the rule? So on this one, um, you have three verbs in each line. I want you to number your paper 1 to 6, and I want you to write down the verb that has an irregular conjugation in the Preterite tense. This is the test to see if you're even a level 1 for this, um, this lesson. So for number 1, you have hablar, cantar, and sacar. Which one has an, has an irregular change in the past? Number two, you have escribir, decir, and trabajar. Number three, traer, lavar, and llevar. Number four, pagar, limpiar, and duchar. Number five, vivir, dormir, and bajar. Which one? And number six, beber, comer, and ir. So pause the video, pick your choices, see how you do. All right, let's see how, which ones you picked. For number one, you should have picked sacar. Why? Because it goes to sake in the yo form in the past tense. That was a little tricky. That's from video one. Number two, you should have decir. Why? Because we learned in this video that it goes to dije, dijiste, dijo. Number three, you should pick traer, to bring. Why? Because it goes to traje. Number four, you should have had pagar, because it goes to Pagé, and it has an, a different um, spell change. Number five, it's tricky. You should have dormir. It's only irregular in the third person and in the plural form. So you should have durmió and durmieron. It has like the spell change. And last but not least, you should have ir. Why? Because it goes to fui, fui, safe way. So how'd you guys do? What level are you on? Can you at least recognize an irregular verb? If you can, and then can you can conjugate it, that song will help you with the conjugations. And level three is what we're shooting for. Can you put it in a sentence? Can you form your own sentences talking about the past? So that concludes our video for today. I hope that you guys do well with module three and module four. Buena suerte, and I look forward to talking to you guys for your DBAs. Adios.